Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today we will talk about the Linux Mint news. Uh, usually this comes out at the beginning of the month, but they were dealing with something kind of crazy last week. And that is resolved, and I thought we would go ahead and talk about that and the other Linux Mint news. Of course, this relates to if you tried to do an upgrade from 21.3 to 22 last week or so, then it might have substantially failed on you. Now, fortunately, I think most people who were going to push the update has probably done it because it didn't break until last week. Uh, and we'll explain why that is among other Linux news as we look at their latest blog breakdown. This was published on the 12th, so last week, and uh, what we want to look at here is first is server upgrades. Uh, this relates to they were creating their cloud-based system of distributing their packages. So most people don't even have to change their repositories for where they're getting their Linux Mint specific repos from. That new default, I believe that's established as the, the Fastly one. I think that's established as the default. It may not be yet, uh, but they are still working on that and they upgraded that to a 10 gigabit per second, 10 times faster than before. And they even said, that uh, they don't even have bottlenecks when updating large packages uh, from Firefox or Chromium, of course, are large packages. They're not even seeing any issues with those anymore. So that's really good news. Now, the main news was related to the upgrade path. This actually goes back, believe it or not, to the XZ bug and the T64 issue. <laughs> so what are these? First, we've covered, uh, if you remember the XZ bug, this was where a probably a deep state actor worked for a very long time to work their way into developing a package for the XZ, I believe it was an archive manager. Now this archive manager only uh, only impacted Debian, well, systems that used um, system D. So Arch though had a different way around it, even though Arch uses system D by default, it was not impacted by this. Debian and by extension Ubuntu was. This is the, the bug that was discovered by a Microsoft researchers who was doing some some basic examinations but the person almost got a backdoor into most linux systems by working effectively undercover as a good developer for a long 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 time before introducing malware that was the xz bug in fact that was really the only thing that has delayed an ubuntu release in a long time so Ubuntu 2404 beta was delayed because of the XZ issue. And this took a lot of focus and attention to resolve across the board, which it was resolved. And for people saying, see, Linux is insecure. No, this was actually discovered because of the open source nature of Linux. Yes, it was discovered by a Microsoft person who works on open source projects. But what ended up happening, what this was, is that... Um, uh, the, the person discovers it, and as he discovers the bug there, um, he reports this up, and they discover that it was effectively this state actor who was seeking to create a backdoor. Now, understand that Microsoft sometimes appears to have slightly fewer bugs. That's because it's a closed source proprietary system. We only know that there's bugs there when someone actually gets it disclosed to the world, and that's not as common. So... There's, for as many potential backdoors as people attempt to sneak into Linux, there's going to be a lot more backdoors into Windows at any given time. But that was the XZ bug. Now, right around that time, T64 came out. So T64 is yet another one of those Y2K type things that when computers running the old ways of doing code, mostly back in 32-bit Linux systems, but in a similar way it was ported to 64, once your computer would hit January 19th, 2038, it would wrap back around in 1901. And of course, just like Y2K, it was going to cause the whole world to completely evaporate into nothingness, apparently. <laughs> I lived through Y2K, it wasn't that bad. Although, some people say that's because we've mitigated it. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, I just, I just know that I had a guy. I, I knew a guy with this really huge fat cat. We said that cat is fat. He says it's my Y two K backup plan. 
Sorry, kitty. You're not that cat. Um, I'm, I'm not sure my kitty will live to 2038. So, you know, I, that's not my backup plan anyway. So that actually caused some some further issues. This was ultimately resolved back in June, but they were working on it up until that time when they were uh, when they were were getting this all wrapped up. Now, this was most important to solve in Debian when they did because Debian has such a long time of being used. It is feasible that a release of Debian and now might still be used somewhere in 2038. It probably shouldn't be, but it probably will be. Whereas distributions like Arch, they roll so much, there's not a conceivable way that somebody's going to install Arch today, and the same version of Arch is still going to be running in 2038. So Debian did have to patch this a lot sooner because it's a much slower release cycle. What this ended up causing is in part of this patches, in order to do the 2404 code, they had to do a system freeze of the Debian unstable repository. The Debian SID is what they, they'll freeze that at one point in time, patch all the known issues for the release in Ubuntu. Well, when they did that, it was Debian was halfway in between the T64 transition, which caused a lot of problems. Now, this is why there was no upgrade path to go from Ubuntu 2204 to Ubuntu 2404 until the Ubuntu 2104.1 package release, which just came out, was it last week, I think? And we talked about that briefly on a weekly news roundup last week. Now, because of that change, there were some issues when Ubuntu released this 2404.1, it caused some package conflicts back inside of Linux Mint that while Linux Mint did have a successful upgrade from 21.3, which was based on Ubuntu 2204, to 2404, based on uh, Linux Mint 22, they were actually successful, whereas Ubuntu was not successful in causing that transition, but the release of the 2404 package base broke the Linux Mint updater again. And so uh, we did have that, that, uh, that point in time when the corresponding release to 2404.1 came out until about a week later, then that ended up getting fixed mostly because the T64 transition was fixed by that time, but that those fixes were not all backported until this final release. So those are the two factors that caused for about a week's time the Linux Mint updater was broken. So if you had successfully tried to, uh, uh, if you have unsuccessfully, I should say, tried to upgrade your Linux Mint uh, from 21.3 uh, 21 to 22 and you failed, you can probably go ahead and give that a try now. They are announcing that is working, but as I showed in my video where I updated one of my production computers uh, to Linux Mint 22, I was very successful and I generally don't do the system snapshots. He says here, you should probably do the system snapshots. Don't be like switch to Linux here. And of course, the reason I don't is for me, I just, the, the backups and the amount this computer is used, the backup system that I have, it's easier for me to just install it than to mess with borked backups. <laughs> so anyway, but it is important to, to do that. Uh, so now that the T64 situation was resolved, the Mint upgrader caused something to get messed up. They end up fixing that. He said, we retested the path three times since the last blog post, considered closing the situation. Now, um, the biggest two applications were LibreOffice, of course, for Office documents, and Samba, which is required for file sharing, uh, mostly between file sharing between computers and, and Windows and things like that. And so those are the two issues that were causing the problems. So that is the Linux Mint upgrade issue that is now resolved. <laughs> All right, moving on in the news, lots of new exciting news coming up as well. We did mention this one on our weekly news roundup this last week, but there will be a new default cinnamon theme. As I have said, as much as I love cinnamon, it is one of the ugliest 
desktop environments you can build. Now, what they do tell us here is that in theory, a distribution should be the one working on those. That's why Manjaro's implementation of Cinnamon is beautiful. Uh, Ubuntu Cinnamon Edition is a beautiful rendition of Cinnamon done in their styles and fashions. So what they say here is that in theory, the distribution should be patching that, but the ones that don't are like Raw Arch, it's not going to mess with patching that because Arch is not really designed to have this one desktop environment. So Arch is really designed to install and then add whatever desktop environment you want and then it installs all the defaults. Some desktop environments like Gnome and Plasma look really good out of the box. Other ones like Cinnamon look like a train wreck. And Linux Mint hasn't ever addressed that because Linux Mint, the creators of the Cinnamon desktop environment, is always focused on their own theme, Mint Y. Now, why don't they just ship Mint Y as the default Cinnamon theme? Well, the reason is that the default theme for Cinnamon, when you install it on a Debian or on an Arch, it is actually there for testing purposes, just to test the basic core systems, not doing all of the bells and whistles. So what they've actually said is, uh, starting in Cinnamon 6.4, they will actually put a little bit more of the sparkle and bells and whistles onto the default theme of Linux Mint, uh, excuse me, of uh, the desktop theme of uh, Cinnamon 6.4. And so we will see that. And as soon as that drops, I'm going to boot myself up in Arch uh, and um, see what that looks like because I am very curious. Uh, other major changes they've done. These are just things that you won't notice, but there's been a lot of uh, just a collection of tools inside of Apt that has not really been maintained, but Linux Mint, Ubuntu, and Debian have been patching them. And uh, as the way Clem describes it here is like death by a thousand paper cuts uh, just to keep all these things patched. So what they end up doing is since they're doing a lot of a lot of nice little tools, they end up merging a few of these together. So GDebian apt URL, instead of using those as separate packages, they merge those into a single application called Captain or is it Captain? I don't know. Uh, app Daemon and Mint Common App Daemon were merged into apt kit. And so all of these end up tools, uh, the app daemon, sem uh, semantic app URL are now using apt, uh, apt kit and captain, which solves a lot of their problems. So this is actually just going to, uh, just going to streamline the way they do things. No longer death by a thousand cuts as they have their own applications they're working with. Package kit already is being maintained, although not with GTK3, but it doesn't need the GTK theming in order to work the way their application is working. So they don't need to do anything with that. That's all behind the scenes. Most people won't notice any of that, uh, but uh, it's there for those doing the technical breakdowns and things like that. And the last thing in the news, if you are running Linux Mint Debian Edition 5, it has reached end of life. The repositories are continuing to work for a little while longer, but you should really consider upgrading it. And there is a direct upgrade path uh, from Linux Mint 5 to Linux Mint uh, Debian Edition 6, and they have the blog post for that listed there. So that is our news on Linux Mint, which was delayed because of fixing the upgrade issue caused by T64 and Ubuntu 2404.1. How exciting. With that, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you uh, would like to see more of this content. Of course, we do like to cover these Linux Mint news releases when they come out, being as that this is the main distro I recommend and use on a regular basis. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and we will see you in the next video.